Congressman yields. A gentlewoman from New York, Ms. Clark, is recognized for five minutes for questioning. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank both Chairman Bishop and Higgins and ranking members Ivy and Korea for convening this, this today's hearing. I'd like to thank our panel of expert witnesses for joining us on this very important subject matter. And speaking up on Mr. Strong, it's, it's very clear that we have reached a technological age where we can address a number of the issues on our border. And I'm just uh, thinking that the you know, I understand the, the concerns and the I guess the way folks are wedded to this idea of a wall, but it seems a bit antiquated um, at this stage, given where we are with respect to technology and our ability to uh, to manage affairs uh, a lot more um, with a lot more expertise, uh, a lot more technology on our border. And besides, I thought Mexico was supposed to pay for it, but that's besides the point. As you may know, I represent a district that has long served as a safe haven for migrants. As the daughter of immigrants myself, I'm deeply vested in protecting our immigrants and seeking accountability for those without a voice. It is crystal clear that after over 30 years that we uh, have to assert an urgent need for comprehensive immigration reform. Our immigration system has proven to be woefully inadequate and the consequences are dire. Let me be clear, no individual seeking safety, freedom, and the pursuit of a better life should be compelled to endanger their own lives or the lives of their loved ones. Customs and Border Protection personnel regularly engage with Americans who live and work around the Southwest border to monitor migration trends and how they affect local communities. And while my colleagues on the other side of the aisle often try to paint the picture of dangerous lawlessness in these communities, it's just simply not the case. Most frequently, community leaders work closely with CBP in immigration and customs enforcement to welcome migrants while keeping communities safe, clean, and prosperous. And many landowners along the border are against the construction of a new border wall. So I wanna ask Ms. Cooper, um, can you describe some of the feedback that you've heard from border communities about why they're not excited about supporting the construction of new border barriers? Thank you for the opportunity to speak a little bit about the work that we do to collaborate with communities across the board. Uh, as, as laid out in the plan that DHS issued in June of 2021, uh, we have been engaged in robust community engagement with respect to the uh, border barrier projects that were planned. That community engagement begins with consultation letters that go to, in, in fact, in the last two years, more than 2,000 consultation letters have been sent out. We've engaged in more than 1,700 meetings with community members. Uh, and we hear a variety of feedback. We hear support, we hear concern, and one of the things that we are able to do through that consultation process is understand what affects each community and to the degree that we can make adjustments to be able to address those things, whether that is with respect to previously constructed barrier system, adjust alignments, uh, in some cases with respect to environmental concerns, create gaps. Uh, we've seen, we've done everything from lizard gaps where, that allow for migratory species, uh, and a variety of other things to, to be able to address community concerns. Very well, I think that's a very good approach. And if we uh, you know, dial down the rhetoric a bit, perhaps we can get to a solution that we can all agree to. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back the balance of my time. Gen